General Kelly, congratulations. And uh, I want to join in also thanking you for your service and your family's sacrifice in defense of our country. Um, the position you're up for, homeland security, is obviously to defend the homeland, to defend the country. But the oath you take is actually to defend the Constitution. It's the oath we take. It's the oath you also took in the military as well. And I think that's an important distinction because it doesn't mean we want security at all costs. We want security in order to you know, have our liberty. So liberty is an important part of this. There have been times in our history when I think we let fear sort of uh, overcome our ability or our desire to defend the Constitution. In the Civil War, we suspended habeas corpus. We kept people without in detention, without trial, without legal access. Uh, we arrested 3,000 editors during the World War II. 100,000 Japanese were detained. We sort of let our fervor or our fear somehow replace our oath, you know, to defend our liberty, to defend the Constitution. We have on the books, and we passed about five years ago, a law that says that an American citizen can be indefinitely detained. Not an American citizen overseas, not someone captured in Syria on a battlefield, someone captured in the United States and accused of terrorism, accused of terrorism, can be kept indefinitely. They could be sent to Guantanamo Bay, but they could be sent a variety of places. It's never been used, and this president has said he wouldn't use it, but he signed it anyway, much to the chagrin of some of us. But it is on the books, and I guess my question to you would be, do you think we can adequately arrest people in our country who are, you know, somehow a threat to our homeland security? Do you think the Constitution could be good enough, that due process and our courts of law in our country would work? Or would you think, you know, there are going to have to be times when we're just going to have to detain people without trial? I'm commit, pretty committed to the Constitution. Um, I was not aware of the law. It surprises me. But uh, I, th I, think, uh, I think we have enough laws to, to help us out in that regard. I think it's important. And, you know, obviously the future is unknown. But you and I have talked about in the office, if something terrible happens, we need people in places of leadership that uh, don't let us succumb to our emotions or in our fear, whether they're rational fears of others or whatever they are, that the law is in incredibly important. And that's what, you know, our soldiers, you know, sacrifice so much for. With regard to how we collect data on people to protect ourselves, once again, it's this idea, well, are we so fearful we're going to collect data on everybody? Um, there have been instances when we have. For example, we've had bulk collection of everyone's phone records. Now, some will argue a technical part of the Fourth Amendment is, oh, well, your phone records are not really protected. Some of us will argue, well, they should be protected. But it's this debate we're having. But it's also a debate about sort of how you come to security in our country. Can we come to security by individually going after suspects or for people for whom we are suspicious of, or should we have blanket surveillance of everyone, which means we have to give up according to some of us, liberty and privacy. And I'll give you a specific example of this because this comes from the Homeland Security. Uh, a couple of years ago, they decided they'd use license plate screeners, and apparently they're very rapid and they can collect hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of license plates an hour. But they decided they would go to a gun show. Why this particularly concerns me is you could also conceive of people as a gun show as exercising some sort of freedom of speech mm -hmm. or some sort of ideological belief by being at a gun show. Not just wanting to buy a gun, but actually defending their Second Amendment right to buy a gun. What alarms me is that if we're going to scan license plates at a gun show, that we might go to a pro-life rally or a pro-abortion rally, depending on who's in charge. I don't want the government scanning people's license plates. I don't want them covering and getting all of our data just so we can possibly be safe someday from something. I want the individual to be protected. But I'm not against Homeland Security going after individuals and digging as deep as you want with the proper process. So what I would ask you is your opinion on how do we defend the country? Can we do it with the traditions of looking at individuals for whom we have suspicion? Or are we going to have to collect all of this data and give up our privacy in the process? Senator, I would go with the traditional route. Uh, the, uh, the scanning of the license plates, I mean, uh, maybe, maybe a reason. I can't, I can't think of one right now. But um, I, I'm not for the collection or the mass collection of data on people.
I'd go the other way. Yeah. And this is an amazing uh, amount of information we can look at. If you had all of the information of everyone's visa purchases in the country, there's no end. But realize that this is a big part of what your job is, is people are going to be coming to you saying, protect us, we want to be safe. But at the same time, what are we willing to give up? Can we keep what we actually believe and what we are as a people, you know, the, the freedom that you were committed to as a soldier? And I hope you'll keep that in mind. Sure. Thank you. Thanks, Senator Paul.